So thank you for joining us today to talk about one of the most important developments in the history of Baltimore City Public Schools and the city as a whole. Before I begin outlining the details of the Baltimore City Public School Construction Act, I need to thank so many of our partners in the city and the state for getting us to this point. As you know, House Bill 860 passed the General Assembly just over a week ago. Mary Pat, you're such a part of it. Come on back up oh, here. We're watching. We're watching. We're watching. You I'm never watching. sit on the sidelines, <laughs> Mary Pat. You're in the <laughs> trenches. I, now, uh, Curran, on the other hand. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Come on up here, Mary Pat. You know you're one of us. I, I know, I know. Come on, we need you. Unified force. I'm here. I'm here. As a bubby, a bubby of a public school student. Two bubbies. Yes, yes, yes. I need you. All right, House Bill 860 passed over a week, just over a week ago, and it is currently on the governor's desk awaiting his signature. I want us to all thank and applaud Governor O'Malley, Senate President Miller, and House Speaker Bush for their critical support of this effort. This bill authorizes $1.1 billion of yes. new yes. Of money for new and renovated schools in Baltimore City. This is a special and unique effort for Baltimore City. It is a landmark bill, which not only represents the most significant legislative achievement for the city of Baltimore in, in my memory. In my memory. In my memory. But it, it also represents a, the, the, a landmark renewal in the partnership yeah. that we have between the city and the state. It's the, the same partnership that my father fought for to benefit eight, 85,000 public school students. Uh, this effort doesn't work and will not work in the future without this continued close partnership. The, the city's funding commitment, including the new bottle tax revenue that goes into effect July uh, 1st, is critical. The state's role, including the lottery funding, and the stadium authority itself is very critical. And the school system's role is essential. Uh, I was very uh, clear with the uh, Baltimore City delegation before the session started that divided we will only fail our students and Baltimore City's future, but together, Together we can rebuild our schools and our city. Just as we are united together to achieve this goal, we stand united to implement uh, this legislation in the coming years. I'm so proud to be here discussing this legislation and the funding streams that made it work and the timeline for moving forward with our partners um, that we gathered. You know, as I, I started to get the messages uh, that started to come when the, the bill first got uh, off the the house floor and um, yeah and and I want to uh, thank my team that just I mean at every step did an incredible incredible job a yeoman's job um, but I, I started to get the messages from the chair from members of the delegation who uh, stood alongside my father as he fought for the uh, city state partnership back in the 90s and 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 we all remember from being on the floor of the council, it was contentious in Annapolis. Oh, it was yeah. contentious in, in Baltimore. Uh, but I, I, all, I knew at that time, uh, for someone who didn't have a child in the system, um, that, you know, that I was just so proud of my father for standing up for something that he knew would have an impact far beyond even his own <laughs> years, mm -hmm. uh, something that would be benefit uh, a grandchild that he hadn't even known uh, at that point. Uh, so when I started getting those messages after uh, the bill first passed the House, you know, just it gave me a, a special uh, feeling that, you know, that that's something that I could do together with all of you continued his legacy. So thank you, thank you. for all that. So I want to thank Dr. Alonzo. I want to thank Neil Duke, our school board chair, and all of our school board members who had to do their part. Uh, to make sure that the, uh, the school's 10-year um, facilities plan was in place before we could go back to 
uh, Annapolis uh, this year. I want to thank uh, Michael uh, Friends, the Maryland uh, Stadium Authority Executive Director. This doesn't work with ha without uh, him being a full partner. So I, I certainly want to thank uh, him. I want to thank Comptroller Pratt. I want to thank our city delegation, United. Yes, yes, yes. United. United. You know that like what, yep. and it goes to show us when we stick together. There's, you That's know, right. the, the sky is the sky is the limit. I want to thank our delegation chairs, Senator uh, Jones Rodwell. I want to thank Yay. our uh, and um, Kurt Anderson. I want to thank Senator Pugh. Yes. I want to thank <laughs> Senator Ferguson. I want to thank Delegate yeah. Robinson, Delegate yes. Mitchell. I want to thank Delegate Washington, wow, Delegate yeah. Oaks. Thank you very much uh, for your uh, support. And I also want to thank Delegate Sandy Rosenberg. Hit me if I miss a, if yeah, a delegate. Right, uh, right behind you. Who are we Ferguson. missing? Ferguson. I said Ferguson. You want me to say him twice? And Delegate Cheryl Glenn. Glenn, thank you very much for being here. I also want to thank uh, City, I mentioned it before, but I, I, it's worth mentioning twice. I really want to thank uh, City Council President Jack Young. Uh, for standing with me. And I also want to thank the members of the City Council who joined me to make the tough decisions to get more local school funding, which enabled us to go to Annapolis uh, with a stronger argument to make our case, as Ricky said, credit worthy. I want to thank Councilwoman Clark for your hard work. I want to thank Councilman Curran. We can thank Councilwoman Spector, Councilman Yay. Henry, Councilman Cole, Stokes. Uh, Councilman Mosby, Councilman Welch, Councilman Scott, Councilwoman Middleton, and Councilwoman Holton. All of them uh, worked hard uh, to help make this happen. The council's support was absolutely pivotal because the plan doesn't work without a revenue stream to support the $1.1 billion in bond. And finally, I want to thank all of our parents, all of our students, Yay. teachers, uh, and all of the education advocates. Yes. including Bill and all the members of the Transform Baltimore uh, Coalition for helping us push forward. 3,000 strong in Annapolis. Yay. Yes, Frank, yeah. Frank Pat, uh, Patinella, uh, B.B. Verde uh, here um, trans from Transform Baltimore, Reverend Foster Connors, and the birthday boy. He said it in a, in, with all of uh, uh, Bishop He's so proud of him. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Bishop Douglas Mild uh, representing Bill, Jimmy Stewart uh, from Child First, Yay, Yasmin Jimmy. Mumby from KIPP, Karen DeCamp from Greater Homewood, Yay. and Raquel Rodriguez from Community Law in Action. Let's give wow. all of our partners a <laughs> big All right. So I also want to uh, talk a little bit about our steps uh, forward excuse me, forward toward implementing this new program, the funding increases and the sources, the partners, the roles, and the timeline ahead. Beginning June 1st, 2013, city government will double its contribution to school construction and renova renovation over uh, previous historic levels. There is a chart over here that talks about, no, 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 you, they can, you all will see it, or, or have, you know, you'll, it's, it's called B-roll, I think that's the term that you all right. use in your, in your, so you can get some B-roll later of the chart, from roughly $17 million annually from general obligation bond funding to about $38 million in combined cash and city go bond funding. This represents the largest increase in local funding for school construction in history and it is not a one-time commitment. This is a doubling of funding that will go forward each year. This funding includes about $20 million in bottle tax revenue, thank you very much to the council, local slots and table game revenue, thank you very much to the city delegation, and retiree health care cost sharing. Beginning July 1st, 2014, the following, uh, the, in the following fiscal year, the state will provide $20 million in state lottery funds. And beginning in fiscal uh, 2016 and 17, the city school system will allocate $20 million from its own budget. The new law adds a new partner to the school construction process, a welcome partner, the Maryland Stadium Authority. Each of these annual funding streams will be used to pay the debt service for up to $1.1 billion in bonds for school construction and major renovations uh, bond issued by the Stadium Authority. This is a massive undertaking uh, for implementation. And I want to thank Michael Friends, Executive Director of the Stadium Authority, for your, you and your staff's professionalism and your support uh, to make this 
this happen. I kept saying, I, I said it to the advocates, I said it to the delegation and to the leadership in Annapolis, you know, the confetti was not going to fall mm -hmm. on Sonny Dye without us having a deal. And I was committed, as all of you were, to getting that deal done. And we went down there with a proposal for how we thought uh, the uh, financing mm -hmm. model could work and the implementation board would work. Uh, but I, I made it clear to everybody uh, that we had to keep an open mind, and it was important to get us over the goal line, you know, with a plan that worked, that we could get uh, support uh, from uh, legislators from all over the state. Something that uh, where we didn't stand on the only stand, the only principle we stood on was doing what was right for the kids, and that's why uh, we were able to get to where we are with this partnership uh, with the state and the stadium authority. Under the new law, the stadium authority, city schools, Baltimore City, and the state interagency committee on school construction were, will enter into a four-way MOU by October 31st uh, of this year. Uh, there are several elements of the MOU that that. Um, legislation requires which relate to the delineation of responsibilities among the four parties including the establishment of procedures to carry out the bill's requirements the timing of the projects and uh, all other related matters that I know that we will sort out in the coming months in short MSA will issue the bonds while the city state and the school system will service the debt MSA will be responsible for building new, building new and replacement schools, and the school system will manage the renovation projects in phase one of the city school's 10-year building plan. The four partners will work very closely together to craft this important implementation agreement over the course of the next seven months, and we are at the beginning of a very, very exciting time for Baltimore. Our vision to grow Baltimore by 10,000 families depends greatly on our ability to provide excellent, excellent public education for young people, uh, no matter what zip code uh, they live in, in Baltimore. It will help us to retain families. I can't tell you how frustrated I get when someone says, oh, I just moved out. Mm -hmm. I have a child that's about to enter the school right. system. It's a new day. It's a new, uh, there are new opportunities, there's new promise. Uh, for families who are currently living, uh, new opportunities and new reasons to want to be a part of what's going on here in Baltimore and also help us to attract uh, new families for years to come as the, the mayor, uh, as the mother of a public school student, as a product of the mm -hmm. Baltimore City Public Schools. Uh, I know how important this is and I know that it sends a clear message to all of us who are here and those who we're try, uh, trying to attract back the Baltimore's best days are ahead of us. Again, I want to thank all of you for uh, your hard work to get us uh, to this point. And I would like to turn this over uh, to the school system. Do I have? Oh, yeah, break you, you're lost in the crowd. Dr. Alonzo, thank you so very much for your hard work to getting us through. It's a really good crowd to be lost in. <laughs> so I, I just want us to, to really reflect on how unique we are in the context of, of this country right now. If you, if you look across the landscape, uh, most urban school districts are losing students. We have now had five consecutive years of increases in our enrollment. Uh, five years ago, uh, there were 4,700 students in uh, kindergarten. Uh, uh, today, 47, 5,500. Today, we have 7,200 kids wow. in kindergarten. So, in terms of, of changing changing that dynamic where parents feel that, that they are, that, they're, <coughs> that the, the city is worth investing is in, uh, you know, we're there. And you can only imagine where we're going to be 10 years from now after we're done with this effort. In many other places, there, is, there are battlegrounds around making the hard decisions. You know, read the paper, read about Chicago and Philadelphia and mm -hmm. Detroit. In Baltimore, we have closed 26 schools in the past six years, and 
we passed a 10-year plan that committed to closing 26 more buildings. And that's not easy, but it happened with enormous amount of understanding on the part of our communities about what we needed to do for the benefit of all our kids. That's very unique. And it speaks to a, to a level of maturity and selflessness in the civic discourse of Baltimore that I think is going to make this work in the long run. And this process, which was a very lengthy and hard process of getting to where we are today, uh, where we had to be endlessly flexible and creative and tough on ourselves, uh, uh, has been really, really good as a harbinger of what can happen in many other areas. And uh, I want to start, and the mayor think everybody, so I don't want to do it again. <laughs> so I, I want to think of some people who perhaps were not thanked. And uh, I want to start with, with people who are in the mayor's staff, Alex, Kim, who at points in the work where it was really, really hard, uh, uh, figure out a way to keep working at it. And uh, you know, I am so grateful to you for it. Uh, uh, Mary Pack got thanked already. I, I think of Mary Pat as Mary Pat and Duana, and Duana Steret is our Absolutely. our counterpart Absolutely. to Mary Pat in, in in Annapolis. And you know, the amount of work that had to go on behind closed doors to make this happen was was yes, astonishing. The mayor didn't think herself, so Absolutely. it becomes my responsibility. Absolutely. I have to tell you, and, and of course, someday we'll write a book. <laughs> the, uh, the, the content of some of the conversations where, where we were in a room and it was just you know, three or four people in the room, uh, uh, I mean, she was, she was heroic in some of these conversations. And uh, you know, this is what matters most for the city. Uh, you know, we, have to, we have to make sure that at the end of the day, uh, at the end of the day, and that was uh, that was so consistent and strong at the point where we had to make sure that that we had that momentum in the conversation. That that you know, I will never be able to thank you enough about uh, your role in that process. So, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. The, uh, the, the, and, I, and I know uh, that the mayor think my bore, but, uh, but I have to do it again because so often I'm the person who people associate with what's going on in the school system. So it becomes my responsibility to say that, that the board is the institution, the, 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 the path forward. And this process of the 10-year plan, which could have a fracture in any other school system in America around, uh, uh, and by the way, I love politics, so I don't use politics as a negative. I think I, I am so grateful to be in America and not where I grew up, where there are no politics. There's only one way. I mean, politics is about figuring out what's possible. The, the, the role of that board in uh, understanding the not negotiables, but constantly pushing for ways to do really, really difficult things, even though being tremendously pushed to not make the hard decisions by communities who understandably want to hold on to the past or want to hold on to what's there, uh, uh, was also remarkable. And uh, I, I have been so lucky in my tenure in Baltimore that, that so many hard decisions have been made, uh, even though there isn't always universal agreement about what needs to be made, but somehow we have figured out a way mm -hmm. to, to get to the right decisions and, and maintain a, a coherence 
even when there are people who don't necessarily agree with what's going on. And that is, is so unique. And, you know, just look a little bit to the side and what's happening in another county. And, and uh, uh, you, will, you will understand what I mean. Uh, our delegation uh, uh, was so amazing in this process. And uh, uh, I mean, there's, there's nothing else to say other than how amazing they were. And, and you know, some people took the lead. Uh, uh, uh. Timing is everything. <laughs> <laughs> I know who you are. I'm looking at you, and I figured that that would be more than enough. But the the Senator Jones, Ratwell Jones, the 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 you know the that that moment to take the lead, uh, and you know we were stumbling with a Senate piece uh, at points in the process and, and it, it came together because we figure out ways to, to, to convince others that this was not only necessary for the city, but it was also good for the state. And one of the great, uh, uh elements of this, this short aftermath is how many people from around the state have been reaching out to me and telling me this is a really good thing. I mean, I, there is a perception out there that this is a really good thing for the state. And I think our delegation uh, was obviously so instrumental in, in communicating that. Uh, 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 the house was huge. And uh, <laughs> as in, uh, uh, that, was, that was the building of speed to get this, get this to happen. So I'm just so grateful. Uh, uh, I don't want to leave out city council because uh, the, these are the people who call me every day uh, about what's happening in schools that they know far better than I do. Uh, so, so they they they've understood all along what this means, and and I'm gonna I'm gonna close with with some of the partners that I have uh, behind me who are who who I see as representing parents and kids, uh, uh, and obviously without them. Uh, this wouldn't have happened because uh, uh, they not only provided the evidence of what this meant to the city, but they, they, you know, they, they were so amazingly good at, at always, uh, uh, always putting it in front of every single one of us how much this meant to our kids and, and to the city. They, they are. They have just been astonishing, and I have, you know, I told them the other day that, uh, of course, this is not the ending. This is the beginning. Yeah. Uh, the ironic piece is that, I, as I said, this is my sixth year in Baltimore, and every time I, we're trying to do something, everybody goes, oh, you can't do that," and then, and then the moment <laughs> that we do it, they say, "Well, now the hard work begins." <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, I think the hard work begins. But, but it's, it's, I don't think it's going to be hard work. I think it's going to be exhilarating work. Uh, I mean, I think every time we put a stone down, uh, we're, we're, you know, we're communicating something extraordinary. And uh, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just happy with what we are right now. Grateful and, uh, and incredibly optimis optimistic about what happens next uh, with our kids and with our city. I think we're going to get to the 10,000, and it's going to happen in a hurry. So, so thank you. Thank you. Neil Duke, who is the chair of my board, will say a few words. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank Madam Mayor for the opportunity to give some brief remarks on behalf of the school board and also echo the sentiments and the acknowledgments of the many partners in this room who are very much a partner in the process of rather great work that we're about to embark upon. Also to Madam Mayor for your political leadership, your courage under fire. This could not have happened. We would not have reached this particular day without your leadership you. and we are truly grateful for that. First, on behalf of city schools, I'd like to pass along our condolences to the immediate family and the extended City Hall family of Matthew Herschel, 28-year finance department employee who lost his life yesterday. 
as the result of an accidental and unfortunate random criminal act. His passing reminds us that every day is precious. We mourn his loss and pray that justice, both swift, certain, and sure, follow in the aftermath of yesterday's horrible event here on the grounds of City Hall. Today, while we mourn Matthew's loss, we also have much reason to celebrate our legislative accomplishment this year and the passage of this district's 10-year plan to transform its facilities um, from bottom up. In the words of Joe Biden, this is a big deal. <laughs> now, you'll note that I've left out some of the more colorful adjectives that I could use to describe his words. Baltimore is already, as Dr. Alonzo noted, part of the national conversation with respect to school performance and reform and innovation. We can now take pride in burnishing our credentials by having created a model of meeting school construction needs in an innovative fashion while remaining fiscally responsible. Most importantly, we didn't get to this point, as noted by the speakers before me, without the efforts of the many partners in the work, many of whom are present at this event. I offer heartfelt thanks, our gratitude for your collective support, your prodding, your heeding to the call to arms that each of you answered, because it truly took a team effort. In recent years, staff, teachers, our students, our families of city schools, we've worked all collectively unimaginably hard to advance academic achievement in our district. But we could not provide 21st century education in antiquated facilities and we could not expect our students to thrive in schools that were literally crumbling around them. We needed to embark on a major school construction and renovation program, the likes of which had never been seen, heard, much less attempted in our city. And now, thanks to the goodwill, the hard work of all of you, the true unsung heroes of our city, today we begin to deliver on the commitment we made to our students and accelerate the transformation of Baltimore City Public Schools and to our fair city. I'll leave you with this quote. I think it's attributable to Henry Ford. Coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is, a pro is progress. Working together is success. We have started our journey toward success because each of you placed this effort as your top priority this year. As Dr. Alonso noted, our work is not over. It now begins in earnest, but it will get done because we are committed and we are unified. Again, our thanks, our deepest appreciation. May history remember this day as the turning point in the fates of those we owe the most to, our children. May God bless the work we're about to embark upon. May God bless our students and our families. May God bless this fair city of Baltimore. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman Duke. I want to bring up uh, one of the partners who, you know, because of his, uh, be because of the respect that the, the legislature has for the MSA, we were able, and, and uh, Michael, we were able to uh, make a deal that worked uh, for everyone. So I, I want to ask him to come up and speak, and then I'll ask uh, Senator Jones Rodwell to speak on behalf of the delegation. Thanks. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, members of the, both the city and uh, state legislative <coughs> bodies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'm pleased to be here this morning. I want to start off, though, by saying, you know, throughout this process of our becoming involved in this, this project, our public comments have been consistent. First, first we, we all have said that, you know, we don't seek out these types of assignments that are away from our original mission. But also, we're, you know, we're here to serve. So it, it, to the extent that it's a good idea for us to become involved in these projects. We, you know, we become involved. Um, and, and furthermore, I don't want anyone to mistake the first part of that statement with a reluctance to become involved. Mm -hmm. um, we relish the challenge of this project, and we intend to preserve our reputation of bringing in projects on time and on budget. Mm -hmm. um, throughout the discussions leading up to this day, um, we found this, this, the school system staff and the, board, the commission members um, the state interagency uh, commission on school construction, um, the city of Baltimore, their staff. We, I think we've worked cooperatively in the spirit of trust. So now that the bill is passed, I just want everyone to know, you know, 
the MSA is all in. <laughs> and um, we're looking forward to working with our partners in this endeavor to craft an MOU that will allow us to work cooperatively toward a common goal. And that goal is upgrading school facilities in Baltimore so that Baltimore school children can receive a 21st century education second to none. Um, before I finish, though, I'd like to recognize a couple of people from MSA here who are going to be doing the bulk of the work on this project. Gary McGuigan, our project executive, who has over 14 years of experience bringing in projects on time and on budget. Um, Eric Johnson, project, senior project manager, who um, was the project manager on the Coppin State project that was transformational in the Coppin State campus, that saved enough money um, in the, in the budget for the construction so that we were able to use that, that money to um, demolish the old auditorium and further transform, transform that campus. And finally, Jan Hardesty, our public information officer, who will be our uh, spokesman for much of this project. So uh, I just wanted to introduce them so you all get to know them. I, you'll see a lot of them in the future. So thank you very much. Good morning. Um, first, giving honor to God, um, I thank Chairman Duke for um, uh, giving me this opportunity to, to kind of segue into the other aspect of this great, heroic, historic occasion. Um, if not for the collaboration that took place through the city, the state, the school system, the Maryland Stadium Authority, we would not be here, as you've heard. One year ago, I don't think any of us thought that we would be here. We were all hopeful, but we didn't know that coming together really does work. This past um, January, when the Baltimore City Senate delegation came together and met with the president of the Senate, Miller, and the House delegation met with um, Speaker Bush to say, this is our number one priority. And this, there's no negotiation about this issue. It happened. It happened because we worked and we knew what our respective roles were. And that is what is going to take us forward. We have to be cognizant of who we are, whose we are, and our role in getting things done. And this is, was not just a, a bricks and mortar event, but this is a community building event because the schools do not just stay within the walls of the schools, but they go out into our communities. So I am just so honored to have worked with everyone everyone and all of throughout this collaboration to make it work. But most importantly, I am so proud of Baltimore City because so many years you heard individuals echoing, well, our lottery money was supposed to go for education. How come it didn't go for education? Well, today it went for education. And I thank all of you for having a role in making that reality real. Again, I want to thank everyone uh, for being here. Thank uh, everyone that had a, a role in making this happen. We have a, a second for a few questions. If you have any school construction related questions, I'd love to. Madam Mayor. Yes. Um, thank you for laying out uh, exactly what has happened here. Uh, in listening in the back of the room, I didn't hear anybody really say, I think I know the answer to this, but they say how they feel about this being passed. So I'm going to start with you. No, I talked about it. You just heard it. Great. Look, just all together, one, two, three. We feel great. 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 Great.
uh, calls, everything, uh, trying to convince them not to stand up and do the right thing for our children. And I'm just so grateful uh, because enough of my colleagues uh, in the city council had enough guts to say, we know what's best for our city and for our kids, and that is for us to 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 put some, you know, as the as the Dr. Alonzo said, some skin in the game uh, to get this revenue stream uh, to to make it happen. And I told him, I said, instead of fighting us so hard, I mean, you know, for for an industry that said that this would, you know, that they were on the brink, mm -hmm. you know, but the it seems like millions they spent in um, in the the. Uh, anti-beverage uh, tax campaign. I mean, they could have just divvied it up between their, their vendors. But anyway, um, to me, you know, they should have put a, 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 a table with uh, sodas at the front of the store and said, buy a soda to help our kids. And, and people would have, you know, I'd start drinking soda again. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Not that far. Right? But, but it would, it would be. You're in South Central. But, you know, it would be a, a, a way for us to, to, because people always say, what can I do right. to help? And we're telling you, you know, this is putting the, the revenue in, in play. So, again, I, I, I have to thank those council members that were willing to, to, to do the right thing for the kids that would not bend, would not break. Uh, to the pressure. You said uh, the plan calls for uh, 15 new schools. Um, what are going to be the first schools built? We're building schools. Yeah, yeah. We're building schools. This is that's the part of the process. That's part of the part. It is part of the the uh, implementation of the 10-year plan is to develop this uh, the partnership with the MOU that I, that we talked about. And um, you know, it, just as that process has been uh, open and transparent, it'll be a, a open, transparent, and inclusive process to, to identify uh, what school is, you know, what project is first. But this is only going to work if we're able to move several at the same time. So it's you know, it's um, you know, it's, it, it is a collaboration, a meaningful collaboration, and we're looking forward to working with all the people. Just like we got to this point, because right. everybody you know brought their A game. Uh, to play their role, we have to do the same thing to, to get us uh, to get us uh, to you know these new new schools and major renovations. Was there ever a point when the deal looked really in trouble? And <laughs> a uh, point. <laughs> and and what was is there a moment or an anecdote that sort of that sort of turned it for the city? I would say there were several. Um, there were several moments um, in public and in private where uh, we thought that this wouldn't um, happen. I mean, we all know what the leadership said in public and in private about the likelihood of this passage uh, before the session started. Uh, but we were not deterred. Um, I can say that the, 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 anec yeah, the, the anecdote, the, I mean, I guess the, the, the bigger story, instead of these separate ane anecdotes, is every one of us whether it's the, the, um, the community uh, advocates, the students uh, who stayed up probably past their bedtime rallying in Annapolis. Yeah, the, the teachers, the administrators, the, the, uh, the, the legislators, everyone refused to take no for an answer. And that's how we got to where we are. This is 1.1 billion. There's there's need 2.6 billion in construction. Are you guys going to have to pull this off again? Or no, I don't think. You know, I, in order to get, you know, they, they say, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? This is it. We're starting, and we don't have. This will give us the credibility to move us uh, closer to our total need. But in order for us to get to two point uh, whatever billion, we have to get this first part done. And that's why this is so important, because it won't just start us on the process of rebuilding our school system, but it'll always, it will also head us on the path to the, the total needs that we have for the city. Could we ask about um, yes. Mr. Hersel? Do you want to say anything about the minutes? Just that um, my, my prayers are with his family. I spoke to uh, his uh, mother last night who, you know, remembered a son who was a giver, uh, who uh, worked so hard uh, for the city, and you know, it, it is a senseless, senseless tragedy. And it could have been any one of us. Mm -hmm. I've stood on that corner, Absolutely. you stood on that corner. It could have been any of us. And just to, 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 to think that something so ridiculous from a person allegedly who's responsible 
you know, a 40-some-year-old man doesn't have that enough sense to know you don't speed like that in a crowded, uh, in a crowded city. It is it's senseless, it's tragic, it is a loss that we all feel mm -hmm. uh, in the City Hall family. And, you know, I, I continue, as I mentioned to his mother last night, to, to, to pray for his family that they have peace. She was uh, said that she, she believes in her heart that he's in a better place, and we have to believe that uh, to, to bring some sense of comfort and solace in this uh, time of so much grief. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.